The way we make things is changing, radically. A new set of ideas and trends have emerged and combined to create a new industrial revolution, one led by people and human innovation. They're using ideas like collaborative design teams and leaner, more customizable manufacturing. Once upon a time, a factory made one thing. Now, a factory can make almost as many things as there are people to imagine them. From Crema Media in Johannesburg, this is the Real Economy Report. Electronics distributor Rectron brings 3D printing to consumers and industries with the launch of its latest offering, the MakerBot range of 3D printers. Skulkberger has the story. Three-dimensional printing is a form of additive manufacturing and involves tiny filaments of plastic laid down layer by layer based on a computer-assisted design model. It is predominantly used in secondary and tertiary education in the US, but 3D printers are increasingly being used in the architecture, design and manufacturing industries. This method of manufacturing enables objects to be created that are difficult to produce with other manufacturing techniques, but increases the time to manufacture objects. While the machines only print in PLA or ABS plastics, US manufacturer MakerBot says that it is testing and developing extruders that will be able to print wood polymers, ceramics and metal alloys within five years and can then be fitted to its current range of 3D printers. MakerBot has already released PLA plastics that look like limestone, wood or bronze once printed. Further, because designs can be printed on any 3D printer, engineers, architects and designers can send their electronic designs to their partners across the world who can then each print out the design to assess the product or design. This could enable teams of skilled people in many territories to contribute to product development and localization. 3D printers may eventually also enable the developers of an intellectual property, such as inventors and researchers, to set up production in multiple markets quickly through partnerships and thus get their products to market before competing products are developed. Rectron Printers Business Unit Manager Bruce Bradford explains some of the industrial uses of 3D printers and the current role in the industry. We, we're looking at enthusiasts, I mean that makes up a really big market in it, and, and, but over and above that really anyone that wants to design something. So we're looking at engineers, architects, designers, um, tertiary institutions on education, so right through there's a very broad spectrum of, and also anyone that wants to prototype something. So if you've got a design, you can conceptualize something, you've got a CAD drawing, straight away print it out and you've got a, a, a prototype which you're ready to go to market with. We've seen uh, a wide use of applications in the engineering market. We have people uh, with water tanks that are designing water tanks that have, have shown us prototypes of 3D feedback which we got back the other day. Um, also people that are designing um, uh, different types of equipment and they want to look at what the applications of it will be in the market, how easy it will be to use. They can then show it to other people and then they, they realize that this will make these changes, make those changes. So in engineering itself is, is, I mean, is such a big market, the application is almost limitless. Yes, yeah, so, so real-time pre real prototyping is, is absolutely probably one of the primary applications of 3D printing. Conceptualize it, print it out, uh, email the plan to someone in another country, he can make some changes, send it back to you, you can both print it out, have a look, you know, make the changes you want and then, and then you're good to go. So I mean, really when it comes to prototyping, it's not really what the printer costs, it's what your cost saving will be. While 3D printing will never replace conventional manufacturing entirely, the use of 3D printers could eventually reduce the logistics required to transport products around the world by enabling distributed and customizable manufacturing near demand centers for certain products. Other news making headlines this week, the 2015 economic outlook is positive for Africa but not for South Africa and 5 million rands worth of bursaries are awarded for studies in the built environment. While significant growth is forecast for five African countries that form part of the top 10 biggest growing economies in the world, this is not the case for South Africa. Top five growth economies in the world, five are Africa. Congo DRC, Cote d'Ivoire, Ivory Coast, Congo Brazzaville, Mozambique next door, and Tanzania. So it's no longer the seven fastest growing economies are African or the six, whatever economists said a, year, a couple of years ago, it's now the five. Well, we're down one or two positions, but we still have half of the top ten growth economies in the world are African, and that is a good story. And then we have sort of a third trend, which is, well, I'm not quite sure whether we should call it a trend, but but very kind of idiosyncratic factors in, in a number of countries. In South Africa, don't need to tell anybody, growth is lackluster, to sort of put it nicely. Um, 
and ESCOM is not encouraging us in, in hoping that it will be much better, um, though there are also some good news stories. 40 matriculants from schools across South Africa have received bursaries totaling 5 million rand to further their studies in the fields of the built environment from the Department of Public Works in partnership with the Construction Education and Training Authority. This initiative is part of what I call a much bigger picture of our seven year plan to rebuild the Department of Public Works, which includes the following objectives. We're trying to rebuild the technical and the professional capacity of public works in the state. We are trying to promote training and skills development in the built environment in line with the needs of the National Infrastructure Plan and the National Development Plan. And we are trying to transform the built environment professions to reflect the demographics of the country and in particular to, fac to facilitate access to the learners from the disadvantaged communities. That's Crema Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy.